Come on in, everybody. We're just waiting for um, a few more minutes for more people to join. I'm asking that you share the live. Um, let's give it a few more minutes, and then we'd like to start promptly, and I would like to just be brief and short and to the point. So we'll give it two more minutes, and um, please share the live. Give it two more minutes, and uh, I appreciate everybody's patience. So, come on in, everybody. I'd like to uh, begin by um, thanking everyone for their time and just to really be able to, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about what's going on. And right now, we're in a very critical moment. Um, if you can, just shed a live and we'll be through it really, really quickly. So let's give it about another minute and then we'll go ahead and get going. I am, um, I'm very uh, optimistic, um, but I also think we should be very cautious about what's going on. And um, we really need to take advantage and strategize about where we go from here. So I just wanted to say a few things. And again, we will uh, we'll go ahead and make this brief, probably roughly about 15 minutes. So, uh, everybody who's joining me, thank you for joining. Um, I see some past leaders that I've worked with. Um, Mr. Bill, Mr. Secker, um, Ms. Hayat, Gary, God bless y'all. Thank you for being on. So I want to go ahead and begin. And again, I'm asking everyone to share the live. As we're going into uh, the next week, as many of you very know, or maybe you don't know, Sunday will be roughly about 45 days out until the election. And with that being said, we are in a very critical time frame. Critical meaning that if we are interested in making a change, uh, we have to be able to organize, organize in the most strategic fashion. Um, by that, I mean that we have to be able to get past a lot of the innuendo, get past a lot of the things that we're hearing, obstacles and roadblocks, and really get down to the heart of the matter. What is the heart of the matter? The heart of the matter is for those who agree with what's been going on with this current administration, you are entitled to your opinion. When I say you're entitled to your opinion, I would not want to minimize politics for the simple point of politics being minimized. But I, what I would like to say is that we are interested in making a change. And when I say we are interested in making a change, we're interested in making a change from the standpoint of over the course of the last four years, we've seen a lot of pretext for things that shouldn't be happening. And let's not sugarcoat it. Let's get down to the heart of the matter and talk about what it really is. What it really is, is we are challenged by the guardrails of this government, meaning that the courts, 
the watchdogs, the press, the public, everything is, is basically turned inside out and our country is in a frenzy in a lot of ways. I am saying that we are seeing, uh, to say the least, we are seeing what the worst of America is. And I know that some people say, well, this is happening before this administration came in. And this is something that um, happened before this administration. But I can say, honestly, um, I don't actually recall the level of discontent. I don't recall the level of um, opposition being so deeply rooted. I don't recall the level of, of hatred and even the level of public discourse when it comes to a lot of the negative things. We're seeing the burnings of, of, of downtowns and business districts. We're seeing looting, robbing. Well, some people say, well, yeah, that's because there are people out there like you that want to make that a, a point of, of taking advantage of the time and making it happen. Um, I believe that there's a lot of people who are frustrated and and when it comes to the rooting and the 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 light the the robbing of businesses and the 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 looting i would say that that is an expression of people like dr king said who when they have nowhere else to go this is where they go like it agree with it or not we are getting ready to announce when i say we i say organizers who are social justice organizers around the country we're getting ready to announce an initiative called count them out the hashtag is count them out because as of this sunday the 20th again we are nearing the 45 day mark where this president who's the 45th president of the united states needs to be voted out of government and not only are we asking for this president to go but we're asking for um folks who are similarly suited similarly minded in the united states senate to go we are working adamantly on the ground with social justice organizations who are able to do that. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, who may watch this video at some point, basically Freedom First International has stood on the ground. We stood against oppression over the course of the last 10 years. Freedom has had, Freedom First International, that is, has had, uh, who it, we've lobbied and worked for some of the biggest civil rights cases in America. We were able to work down in Manning, South Carolina, and we overturned the youngest person executed in the United States of America, be the Stinney case. We were down in, in, in Cleveland, Ohio, and we defended the rights of Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old who, who was shot by police. Our standpoint when it comes to justice is we have to be able to stand in the gap when it, when it comes to people who are oppressed. And that is around the country. And we've stood around the country time and time again. We, did, we went down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And we stood with the family of Elton Sterling. We went to Beaver Creek, Ohio. And we stood with John Crawford when his son was shot in the Walmart. And a case that's ongoing of police brutality. Not only that, but we've stood when it comes to political corruption we, um, the day after President Trump was elected, we organized some of the biggest rallies and demonstrations probably in the country. We put 6,000 people and we shut down Lakeshore Drive. Um, we actually organized and woke one of the organizing groups that actually stopped Mr. Trump from coming into the metropolitan uh, areas of Chicago and when he was actually elected, he was going to do a rally where we stood with other organizers and we stopped him. Um, again, I, for one, as a, a bishop and a man of God, a man of faith, am not um, organizing for politics, but I'm organizing for cause. We are interested in this particular government being accountable we're not interested in standing for a political party, but we're interested in 
being apolitical, meaning that we're standing for the community and somebody has to be the conscience of the government. Somebody has to hold these government officials accountable. And why not us? In the most critical time in United States history, what are we seeing out there? I just want to talk about what we're seeing out there. What we're seeing out there is we're seeing oppression all around the country and all around the world. I know some people didn't like when I said that the only nomination that we believe that President Trump should be nominated for when it comes to the Nobel Prize, uh, the only nomination is we believe, we really do believe that he should be nominated to be prosecuted in the international courts at The Hague. I hope it happens. But at the same time, we are calling for people just to be the conscious of our community. We're calling for people to stand up and not ignore this election. Over the course of the next 45 days, uh, right now we're just over that benchmark. Sunday will be 45 days and counting to where if we want to work adamantly on the ground with other organizations, other structures, uh, we are working with the Lincoln Project. Freedom First is working with social justice um, networks. We have over 60 around the country, and we're asking people to go out and vote. We're asking people to go out. If you, if you can't go to the polls yourself, mail in those ballots. Make sure you understand the process. Make sure you understand how it's done, every aspect of it. Um, early voting is starting within the next few days, and I believe it started. I don't really, un uh, I'll, we will announce the logistics of how that's working as the days go on, but we want to be able to have conversations with people about how to get it done. Also, we are setting up to where as if we're seeing voter fraud, if we're seeing problems with people getting to the polls, watchdogs will be there. We're working with those and putting those things into place. But right now, the biggest thing that we have going is the count them out campaign. And basically what that is, is again, we're counting down 45 days to whereas we are asking folks to simply use the hashtag, count them out. And with that hashtag, we are asking folks to stand up and say why you feel like this particular group, this particular organization and administration should be counted out. Um, when it comes to this particular president of the United States, I mean, I can go down a list of a lot of reasons why we feel we believe that he should be counted out. But let's just give a few for the people who are saying, well, what reasons do you feel like he should be prosecuted? Well, let's talk about internationally and then we'll come back and we'll bring it back down to the United States of America. Um, 70,000 Kurds are sitting in concentration camps because this administration, including this particular president, turned his back on these people who worked for us, who were actually organizing for us and fighting for our side. Down 70,000, let me make sure my numbers are right and correct me if I'm wrong, but 70,000 Kurds as we stand, families of women, men, and children, because this government turned their backs. And yes, we are not, um, we are not saying that there hasn't been a time in American history to where the government of the United States hasn't played its hand in international conflict and the nation in the name of democracy building and national and national conflicts. But what we are saying is it is time for us to really take a good look at who we are calling our leaders. And I believe, and I've said it, and I'll say it time and time again, we use that word too generously. Leader is something that we apply in every context. We need to stop doing it. I would say that we can make a change over the course of the next 45 days. 45 days and counting. I would say that if we show the level of, of, of um, concentration, a concentrated effort, make sure that the seniors are getting to the polls, make sure that they understand the, the pros and cons of it. 
um, with COVID, a lot of those folks won't be able to get to a poll. So we got to make sure that elected officials in some of these communities, that there's ways that they can do either mail-in votes or get their ballot and make sure that it counts. Um, there's a lot of legwork that needs to happen over the course of the next few days. So I want to go back into some of the specifics of the Count Em Out program. Here's what we're asking for again. We're asking for the hashtag Count Em Out to be used, Count Them Out, um, when it comes to any information about discourse from this administration and those who are unhappy, Count Em Out. There is a Facebook group. We will have a web page over the course of the next two days. And we'll also have a um, Twitter account for Count Em Out. Also a Instagram page. And that's over the course of the next week. What we have right now is the Facebook group. And going into the next five days, we'll have the other social justice um, uh, mechanisms in place. So Count Them Out. Um, we are working right now. The first week of it, you'll see uh, entertainers. You'll see pol uh, some politicians. Uh, we have um, commentators from news, CNNs, from uh, uh, some uh, news outlets who will actually be sharing one minute to two minute videos about why they believe this administration should be gone. And that is under the hashtag count them out. And basically, we're not telling anybody what to say. We're asking for you to bring your own voice, your own opinion to the subject matter and basically do a one two minute segment video if it's a facebook video if it's a youtube video if it's a video that you download and you want to share use that hashtag count them out and say why you feel like this administration should be gone also on the 20th we are announcing our first location in the, the national press conference for count them out and that will be in chicago in the bronzeville neighborhood of chicago so we are asking for those who are able to join us for that national prize conference. And we'll be broadcasting our social justice networks around the country. Uh, like I said, we have over 60. Um, and we'll actually be asking and having news to come out. There'll be leadership all around the country who we will be going and we will be asking to join this campaign starting with, with Chicago on Sunday the 20th. So tune in for that. It's going to be at 3.30. Uh, go to hashtag count them out. And basically the leading organization is Freedom First International. We've been on the ground with refused fascism out of New York. And I don't know if everyone had a chance to view some of the things that we're doing. This is an organization that is doing awesome work. And I've been a signatory. I was an original signer of their declaration uh, with Carl Dix, with uh, Dr. Cornell West, uh, Layla Hathaway has jo had joined early on through uh, relationships from people involved. I believe it might have been uh, Ted Sirota in the art artistic community that he represents, who's a huge part of Refuse Fascism. But Layla's now a part of that campaign, and she's been around for about a good two to three years that I know about. Um, we have a lot of... Um, we have a lot of pronounced people who have stood with us all around the country um, to be a part. And Refuse Fascism is, again, standing in the void to fill the gap. Sunday, we will do our Count Em Out program announcement. And right now, we two weeks ago, we did a press conference in Chicago. Uh, it, was, it was the second of many consecutive press conferences. But we're in what they're calling 60 days of struggle. So that started a few weeks back and we are currently in that. Monday will be at the Federal Plaza downtown Chicago, uh, which will be one of the locations. And we will have a, another press conference. I'll put that out so we can share that. We want both events to be attended. Um, the, the Refuse Fascism is also a multinational campaign. Uh, very pronounced, dedicated folks who have been on the ground, who are who are really saying and doing the work that is. Um, I, I haven't really seen a lot of orgs, other organizations. Again, some of the names that are involved: Dr. Cornell West. Uh, um, 
I just, I mean, the names are endless. Uh, I want you to go to their national website um, and look at the work that they're doing because it's going to be critical that we connect the dots with these organizations over the course of the next few days. Um, someone asked about, I think it was Shatish, our uh, International Vice President for Freedom, asked about international implications. Um, yes, uh, there are international implications from what Mr. Trump is doing, which is another critical reason why we want to stop him. Um, right now we're seeing, I'm going to say fascism, fascism grow like never before. We see these structures that are coming together like never before. And these structures, if you look, you see a similarly suited situation to where it's, there's oppression of the masses. There's um, these uh, neoconservative thought processes that are happening, which are anti-community. Uh, say, for instance, Israel. We'll talk about Israel. And, and um, when I say Israel, I mean the political government over there, which is basically in a similarly suited situation as the United States. Their prime minister, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, is being prosecuted Um or excuse me, is being pro currently going through a prosecution. He hasn't officially been prosecuted, but he's going through and he's being challenged um, for political corruption. Same thing as Trump. Um, we're seeing that in other countries around the world. And we see these forces that are working outside of public interest. They're aligning themselves together. And again, you see it, you see it, you can see it, you can sense it in the air. Well, if we don't stop these forces from coming together now, then I can guarantee you that going into the next few years, if we think the world is in turmoil now, I can only imagine what it would look like then. The last count that I've seen with COVID-19, for example, over 200 thousand people have lost their lives somebody correct me if i'm wrong i'll look at we'll look at the stats Two hundred thousand people have lost their lives in the united states alone we haven't talked about just the worldwide global ramifications or the the count of lives that have been lost and this government this political government is insensitive to every aspect of that you know certain political uh, pundits have said what is this administration is doing is criminal well I can pretty much say that me I feel that it is criminal I feel that what's being done is criminal I feel that anytime government places the interest of government above interest of the community anytime government forgets about the small people forgets about the little people but they all they all are working towards selfish means selfish goals and personal enrichment that's not government that's dictatorship that is a totalitarian government that is on the rise so here's the thing. Yes, 45 should be held accountable, and we are looking to stop this government. I want to say another thing while we're on, and I'm going to take about 10 more minutes, but one more thing that is a very specific point. We are asking the evangelistic community around the world. Now, I am a bishop. I represent several organizations, Freedom First International, the Urban Christian Leadership Conference. Um, we are working towards educating the community, but I am asking evangelists, the evangelistic community, those ministers, those men and women and people of faith who have stood with Trump, I'm asking you to think about that stance. And I'm asking you to think about, is this something that you really want to do? Do you really want to be on the wrong side of history and stand with this president of the United States of America who has worked against not only you, he hasn't represented the church, but he's turned to you in uh, times where he's needed you. And guess what? You stood behind him. The evangelistic community, I'm asking you to think about this 
and let's think about where we stand right now. We have got to change the dynamic and hold these political forces accountable across the country. We have got to change what's going on in America. We need you to be on the right side of history. We need you to stand up and be what it is that you should be, which is accountable to the community. Now, people feel like, if you feel like this narrative is one-sided, while well, I can guarantee you that I am not the only one who feels like this, I represent millions from around the world and around the country, and there is growing discontent every day, and it's resounding. Our courts are in are struggling. Our courts are in a mess. Our 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 our, our criminal justice system has only gotten worse, and we see the rise of supremacist and 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 uh, militaristic militant organizations coming up every day. I'm gonna say um, for another another thing that I was gonna actually talk about, but I'll mention it now. Um, and I'll share it over the course of the next day. Uh, there, the other day, um, when we saw um, some of the militant groups the, that were down in Stone Mountain, Georgia, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm going to just briefly mention it. Um, some of the armed groups, there were black groups that had arms, and then we've seen them around the country protest. Well, it is their right to carry arms and protest. We get that. Just like the, the conservative groups that went down to Detroit and Texas, and I think we saw them in a few more areas, who had guns down at the Capitol, and they were protesting. Well, what I did see um, the other day, which alarmed me, was uh, there was a particular grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan who came back and said that, who came back and said that, basically, uh, just know that if these folks have guns, then we have trained folks who have guns, and basically we won't stand. So if you want to march, feel free to march, but just know that we're standing there, and we're trained, and we've been doing this better and longer than you for years. So this is a grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan down from uh, Georgia who was saying that basically <sighs> confusion is getting ready to start. So... I'll go into that later on. That's just a whole nother mess. I want to get back to the specifics as far as what it is that we're dealing with. We want this, we want this president of the United States out of office. We won't stop till he's gone. And I'll tell you what, we're asking for everybody to pay attention in the days ahead. And one more thing that I would like to say, as we see this president this president and his administration and some of his pundits as they as days go on and they're slipping in the polls we see them getting more and more desperate we see the level of discourse that they're putting out there is being more and more erratic someone was someone was saying um on the president's team one one official was saying that basically uh it's it probably will take guns to get this president out of office, meaning that bring your guns. I, I am praying and hoping that we can do the right thing when it comes to our aggressive political disposition. But I'm also hoping that when it comes down to it, that we can show this, this particular administration even when they are voted out of office, and I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but I'm saying if we work hard, the chances are greater that that will happen. When they leave office, I'm saying that I'm hoping that it's a peaceful and smooth transition. We'll work hard to make that happen. For those who don't agree, either um, on the ground or um, in states and cities around the country, you don't have to burn things down. You don't have to agree with violence. We want you to agree and support the cause in peace. We understand that there's confusion. We understand that those are folks who are frustrated, but we want you to agree without being violently disagreeable, without burning down structures, without burning down filler stations and, and, and burning down 
drugstores and burning down things because guess what? We need those structures in order to survive. Seniors have to go to drugstores. They need the drugs in drugstores, not only seniors, but sick folks. I mean, you know, these are commodities that we need. We got to think about how we interpret that in the days ahead. But we also have to say one thing and one thing alone. We are black. We are all raising up the cause when it comes to Black Lives Matters and how valuable that is. But I also I want to say that everybody who picks up a banner and says, I'm Black Lives Matter or has a Black Lives Matter banner is not Black Lives Matter. So know that their movement, this movement is a global movement that people are rising up to the cause. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're joining that cause. And if you see people who are doing things in the name of Black Lives Matter, burning down things, we've seen people, uh, militias, who have had Black Lives Matter shirts on around the country, and they're doing things so basically to keep confusion going. So just know that everything is not Black Lives Matter, or people who are getting involved in this movement are doing it to cause confusion, and they are not Black Lives Matter. Even when we protest, we've protested around the country, people are saying, well, we're Black Lives Matter. Well, we're not Black Lives Matter, the organization, but we stand for that cause. There are folks out there who are saying things like all lives matter. Well, I don't, dis I don't agree with that. I don't disagree with that, but I don't agree with it either. All lives matter pretty much means that basically we are um, ignoring what's going on in the community. Did all lives matter in the, in the 50s when Emmett Till was thrown into a lake? Did all lives matter when we're seeing mass incarceration of African-American men that has gone through the roof um, in, in jails and in, in county jails around the country? Did all lives matter when you, have, when you were seeing, you have seen over 200 plus in county immigration jails packed with Latino, uh, our Latino brothers and sisters and, and, and packed with men, women, and children. All lives didn't matter then. So why are we even using that banner now? Well, we're using it to throw off this movement. And what I'm saying is if it's a righteous movement and they're doing the right thing and people who have been oppressed are rising up and their voices are being heard in the ears and they, it's being recognized all the country, even in corporate America, then let's say this, let's look at that movement for what it's really worth and let's not try to minimize it with other discourse. Let's not try to bring confusion into it. Blue lives matters, this lives matters, that lives matters. Well, yeah, show me that all these other movements when you started it, show me what your purpose was. Show me why you brought that forward. I mean, again, these are things that we have to talk about and deal with. Our critical structure, our energy, our motivation must be dedicated towards counting them out. And that's why 45 days, we need everyone's attention all the way up until November the 3rd, all the way up until Election Day evening. We need your help. Remember, what we're asking for to start this campaign off is to use this hashtag, count them out. And we use that hashtag. We'll be able to bring folks together. We want to show a variation of voices. I'm not talking about just blacks. I'm talking about Latinos. I'm talking about whites. I'm talking about people from all over the country. And this is not a movement. I just want to say one more thing. This is not a movement to alienate anyone. This is a movement to throw support and bring it up. So let's go ahead and focus on what's going on in the days ahead. I will be addressing um, everyone around the community and keeping you up to date as far as what's going on over, over the course of the next several weeks. And um, we're just hoping to make a change. We have a lot of things going on. There's a lot of moving parts, but we're hoping to make a change and we need your help. Freedom First International, check that out. Use that hashtag. Count them out. Use that hashtag. If you want to make a video, 
the Facebook group is up. I believe it has 50 people was started um, about four days ago. So it has 50 people. We will probably have over 300 people in about a week, maybe 400. It's not a lot of people. But again, we want people to share a two minute, one to two minute video about why you believe this administration should be gone. Count them out. Listen, thank you for everyone's support. Um, again, I'm Bishop Greg L. Greer. We want to go ahead and mechanize, mobilize, and be able to stand up with motivation and determination in the days ahead. We can do this. We can basically show the uh, uh, neocons and these folks who have this extreme thinking that this is not the way to go. This is outside of public interest. Please, let's stand together. Let's stay focused. Don't let anybody take y'all off y'all square because they're going to try to pull every trick in the book to do it. Don't let them do it. Listen, count them out. Say it one more time. Here's the hashtag. Count them out. Stand with us in the days ahead. Sunday, Chicago. We're going to be uh, outside of the Swift Mansion. Go to the Facebook group. Go to my web page. Uh, go to my website. Go to my Facebook page, Greg lgreer.com get the information inbox me if you have any questions oh, oh um one more thing we will have a national uh zoom call and we'll have it with uh uh several people i'll list that going forward probably monday um and this will also include members of the press it'll be a national zoom call so i'll list those in the days ahead but again Count them out. Freedom First International. Let's support refuse fascism, not just in Chicago, but around the country. Let's get them out of here. Bless y'all. And we'll talk soon. Count them out. Let's get them out. Thank y'all. Peace.